And I work with Men's Warehouse. I've been with us for about 15 years this year, and Brandon's here to support me today. He's the local store manager at our store in Ontario, very close to you guys, so we appreciate you inviting us here. Um, we've been in business at Men's Warehouse for over 45 years, and in that time, uh, we have learned a lot about getting people prepared for special events in their life. Now, oftentimes the customers coming to us and they're saying, hey Sam, you know, I have to get ready for something really, really important. This is a big job interview coming up and I really want to crush it, so what should I wear? So we've helped a lot of people with this problem. Uh, at the same time, we're running our own business, so we're trying to make our best hiring decisions. Uh, we're always trying to find the best employees. We're going through this same process ourselves. So we've taken everything we've learned in this 45 plus years of business um, about getting people prepared for interviews and about what really is a successful interview and we've turned it into this presentation called How to Dress for Success. So that's what I'm gonna get to share with you uh, today. So some of the things that we'll be covering for you, interview preparation tips, uh, how to make a positive first impression. That's really what it's all about, right? What attire is interview appropriate for what type of interview? Uh, what to look for in the fit of that attire once you pick it out? How should the garments fit to be proper? some important details that you'll want to think about and what men's warehouse can do to support you in all of this stuff so the first thing we're going to look at is before the interview how do you get prepared what are some of the things you're going to want to consider you want to set some goals by writing a personal business uh, mission statement so a mission statement is really why are you going into business that's unique to you right so i can share with you men's warehouse's uh, personal business mission statement and at men's warehouse we strive to provide personalized one-of-a-kind service that helps men love the way they look so we want to sell a bunch of clothes right uh, everybody wants to do business in business uh, but what makes us unique from the other places that you can buy clothes is we want to provide that personalized one-of-a-kind service that helps a guy love the way that he looks so you want to think about your mission statement and how that applies to you why are you going into this field what what's important about it what is it that you're hoping to accomplish you're going to want to do some research on companies before you even put an application in. Uh, you, you want to find some questions uh, along your research that come up that you want to make sure you're asking in the interview setting. So you need to do your research to have those questions prepared. We're going to talk a little bit about customizing your resume to be the most impactful that it can be. How to make sure that your social media enhances your business profile. How, how can you leverage social media to be an advantage to you? So this is all some pre-interview stuff. So we'll back up and we'll start at the personal business mission statement. What do you like to do? How do you like to do it? This is really you know, about what is gonna make you happy going into this career, this uh, company. So we'll think about three carriers. What kind of work interests you? So we, we feel like people fall into kind of two buckets for each of these categories. Are you the kind of personality that likes working regularly with big groups, different people, diverse crews of people, you know, in retail, sometimes maybe you'll be working with the logistics crew to get all your shipment in, you're working with your corporate office to execute strategies, you're working with your sales force team, you're doing training, you're turning around answering the phones with customers. Some people really thrive off that. You look at your watch and before you know it, you're like, holy moly, the day's gone, this was awesome. Other people, that's not their personality, right? They like a small, intimate group of people, smaller teams, maybe two, three people you're working with every day. Maybe you like working by yourself, right? Some some businesses you can kind of work by yourself so you want to think about which of those buckets do you fall into what kind of environment encourages you do you like fast-paced and ever-changing where uh, again you're kind of in a diverse uh, set of roles throughout the day or any one shift or are you slow methodical you like to sink your teeth into a project and really focus on that and just go with it until it's done. So, you know, if you think about maybe an architect or an engineer, they might be working on a project like a, a bridge and, you know, there's years of design, there's all of the permitting, there's the contractor work that you're doing. It might be three, four, five years before you see this idea in your head come to fruition in terms of a finished product. Some people really like to dive in and work on that same type of a project day to day. So think about what which of those buckets you fall into the last thing here is what kind of guidance do you prefer so I'm really talking about what kind of manager do you want to work for what kind of leadership can you get behind 
Some people have what we call the self-starter mindset. So if you enjoy the project in terms of high school of like a, a term paper maybe, you know, you're given the topic, this is the goal, here's the criteria, we want you to write it, seven, eight pages, whatever it is, uh, great, see you in six weeks. Some people really enjoy that freedom, you're given the goal, then you're allowed the creativity to work on that goal however you want and you stand by your results. Other people, they want a little bit more coaching. They need that encouragement that they're on the right track. They don't want to feel like they spent the past three weeks, but they got lost in the woods and they've been spinning their wheels. They're not exactly accomplishing what the project was. So they want that coach or that leader to give them a little bit more guidance to make sure that they're on track and that makes you feel a lot more confident. So we use the example of like a biology lab, right? There's like steps one through six. We're all going to accomplish one step at a time and that gives people some more confidence. So think about these areas. It'll be a little different for each of us, which you fall into. We talked about researching the company. Um, before you put an application in, I want you to know that this is something that you're interested in coming on board with. So you wanna do that by learning about their history, their culture, what's going on with this company. The great news is in today's world, it's super easy to do. The first thing I'd recommend is pull your phone out, you go to the company's website, and most bigger companies on their website, they're gonna have a link that says something like about us. So you click on about us and it's really cool. It'll take you to a page. The company is going to tell you everything that they want the public to know about them. So how long have we been in business? What are the products and services that we offer? What's their, their business mission statement? Um, what kind of markets do they operate in? You can learn all of this uh, usually on their about us page. And so that's a great place to start. Then I want you to go beyond that, because if about us is everything the company wants you to know, we should really find out what's the rest of the world know about this company when their paycheck isn't signed by them. So you can check out news articles, different current events, go to Google, punch the company's name in. You can usually click a tab to uh, filter out only the news stories about it and see what's going on with this company. The reason you want to do that is maybe this is a great company to come on for. They might be growing, they might have new products or services they're expanding into new markets and you're thinking hey you know this is the kind of company that maybe I should come on board with to start my career it looks like they're growing there's a lot of opportunity here maybe I can accomplish what I want to do with this company uh, conversely maybe there's something not so great going on maybe they're running into financial trouble they're gonna miss a bank note that's due uh, coming up in a month or two and the markets are a little sketchy about it maybe there's some sort of a scandal that's going on that you don't want to be associated with because of the values you find important uh, you learn about all of this stuff by finding out what's going on in their current events Along the line, you want to find out how long have they been in business? Is this a stable company that's been around for a while? What's their business mission statement? You already thought a little bit about what's important to you. And so when you know this stuff, then you can really make a decision that, hey, this is a good fit for me. I, I'm kind of interested in this company. This might be someplace I want to come on board with. While you're doing this, I told you you want to come up with some questions. When we're in an interview setting, we're really not looking for it to be a one-sided thing. We want to have a dialogue with you. So write questions down as you're doing this research. Um, two freebies that we're going to give you here we think are great interview questions that are fair to ask when you're face-to-face -face with somebody. What are the challenges that I'm going to face in this position? It's a fair question, right? What's the hardest thing for people to accomplish when they take this position? I want you to ask it because I, I want you to know that you're up for the task, right? If you find out that the biggest challenges is something you're really not interested in doing, it's better to learn that up front in the interview process than three weeks after you accepted the position. You wake up and you say, oh my gosh, I can't come in today. I, I, I'm not up for this position. What was I thinking? The other side of that is you want to ask about growth opportunities, right? What can I do with this company? Most of us as you graduate, you're probably not going to take your first position as the chief financial officer of a Fortune 500 company. Maybe that's what you're interested in doing, but it probably isn't on the table right when you come out of your, your initial education, right? But you might be okay with coming on board with this company if you know you can get to where you want to be. So basically what I'm suggesting to you is ask for that roadmap. If this is what you're interested in doing, but you're kind of wanting to get your foot in the door by accepting this position, how does one get to 
position X, Y, Z. And you ought to be able to have that laid out for you. Hey, well, first you'd, you'd do this, and if you do a good job in this position, you can take a promotion. You're gonna need the following certifications to get to where you wanna be. And, and you get that sort of roadmap. And if that roadmap can be provided to you, you may wanna start thinking, well, maybe I'm gonna keep shopping around because it really doesn't seem like I can do what I really wanna do with this company. Okay, so customizing your resume. So some of you may have a resume already printed, uh, ready to go on your computer that you can provide at a moment's notice. I'm gonna challenge you to think about a couple things about your resume. The goal of a resume is to get a hiring manager to contact you. So a great resume is never gonna win you the position on its own. You're gonna need to do that in the interview process. But the goal is that the resume stands out enough that the hiring manager says, you know, really, this is a candidate I might be interested in. Let's learn about them some more. To demonstrate that your skills are a good match for the position, you, you want to show skills that specifically align with this position that you're applying for. So take a look at your resume, take a look at the position that you're applying for, and you may want to make some adjustments to have it speak more specifically to this a particular position that you're interested in. Now, it's awesome to include paid work history in your resume. Some of you may have part-time or full-time jobs that you can already list on that. I'm gonna encourage you to do that, that's great. But sometimes when you're first exiting your uh, high school education, you might feel like, well, you know, I really don't have enough work history to fully flesh out this resume. I wanna add more stuff, um, but I don't know what to add. So you can add transferable skills from other areas in your life that aren't necessarily paid work history to support your resume. And we're gonna give you three here that we feel translate extremely well regardless of the industry you might be interested in. Maybe you're going into finance or engineering or retail or fashion or anything like that. These three our skills companies are looking for regardless. So the first one's teamwork. You know, teamwork is really important. Most of us aren't gonna work on a team of one. We need people to support us. We need people to help us get these projects done. Um, and in business, the important thing about teamwork is you know, not only that you can work with a group of others, but that you can work with a group of others where you didn't get to pick the rest of the group, right? It's a diverse, team of people that were thrown together uh, and you guys all have to accomplish the same goal. So think about other areas in your life where you're demonstrating teamwork in that respect. We like to throw out team sports, obviously baseball, football, basketball, softball, things like that. Uh, you didn't pick everybody on the team, but you guys are all trying to win the same game. Um, bands, student government associations, all of these things are great to put on your resume to demonstrate teamwork. Uh, beyond teamwork, we're looking for somebody to lead the team, right? Especially if you're interested in a management position, you're gonna wanna demonstrate leadership abilities on your resume. So not only can I work with that diverse group of people, uh, but they have a way of getting behind me, and if I see people struggling, I pull them across the finish line with me. So think about those things where you can demonstrate leaderships, different awards that you've won or acknowledgements that you've been given in these associations or groups that you participate in uh, highlight all of those things and the last thing we put here is customer service skills so every business is built on a customer right they're the ones who provide the business with all the money so regardless of the industry you're gonna have a customer somewhere and if you can be trusted especially in an entry-level position to interact with that customer face to face to be responsible with uh, money transactions to answer questions to educate the customer uh, to be able to listen and interpret the information that's a really highly valuable skill and if some of you have part-time jobs you may have worked with customers before you'll know customers aren't always easy it takes a certain something to be able to work with the public like that uh, if you have those skills that's highly marketable so be proud of that and the last point we make on here is limit it to one page you might be really excited you might have a ton of great content and you want to share all of that with us uh, many things in life are best when they're edited to their strongest uh, most simple form so I'm gonna challenge you to take your resume and boil it down to the single best page you can give somebody remember it's not the resume that's going to get you hired. You just want to stand out so you can learn more and talk with your hiring manager. Okay, social media. This is a cool slide. All of us use some form of social media in today's world. 
Um, and the thing I want you guys to understand is that companies are using social media before they make hiring decisions. And they're using that to learn more about you. And unfortunately, I have to share with you that we're not using social media to look for additional reasons to hire you that you forgot to tell us about. We're looking at social media to find disqualifying reasons, reasons why I shouldn't hire you. Is there any red flag? Is there something that concerns me? I don't know that I want this employee to be the face of my brand. Okay, so that's the bad news. The good news is you can turn that all on its head. You can leverage social media to do two great things for you in business. And the first one is to enhance your brand. So if we all closed our eyes for a second, we thought about one person in the world who's really, really rich and really, really successful and famous, and they really haven't done anything except they've done a really good job at managing their social media profile to launch them to success. Well, that's the case. People have done that and you can do it too. So think about what can you do to post on your social media that's gonna enhance your image. Maybe those associations you're participating in. If you built a Habitat for Humanity over spring break and you're really proud of that. Well, hey, that's great content to put on there. You won an award, you t uh, went to DECA Nationals, you, your sports team uh, won the regional competitions those are all great things that if I see that on your social media I'm thinking hey this person's engaged in their community they're um, you know given awards they're outstanding in their field of interest that's all great content to see and you can leverage your social media by making that heavy or the first thing somebody sees the other thing that social media can do for you is expand your network you may have heard the phrase it's not what you know but who you know well in business especially as you're starting that's very true. Um, there's some really cool apps out there, platforms. Uh, I'm gonna throw out the one LinkedIn is one that we use a lot. And they're a professional networking platform. It's not meant to be super fun social media. It's not image heavy like Instagram or some things like that. But it really is all about just growing the network of people in the area of interest that you have. So if you're going into um, you know, automotive engineering, you could find other automotive engineers and you could see what was their education history? What companies have they worked for? I can send a direct message, I'll be aware if uh, somebody says, hey, we're having a hiring fair today um, at XYZ Business, and that happens to apply to you, you might learn about an opportunity. Uh, you might learn what other successful people in this industry have done to get there, and you might make some connections that open some doors for you. So I would suggest that that is a great thing to start doing, building your network, um, and you'd be surprised at the opportunities that can present itself. When you are using social media and you have a uh, image of yourself, we suggest that you go from shoulders to head, it should be a friendly image, you should be smiling, dressed professionally, and the last thing on there is really just make sure your privacy settings are the way you want them. You can do whatever you want with your social media, I would just challenge you to take control of it so that your friends see what you want your friends to see, and Sam from Men's Warehouse only sees what you want uh, them to see as well, right? Okay, so you're prepared for your interview. First impressions are everything. A well-tailored suit shows that you're serious about the position you came to apply for, you want it, and you came dressed to win. Show up a little bit early. If you come 15 minutes early, you can acclimate yourself to the surroundings, you'll feel great, you'll be more comfortable, but I'll just share with you, if you're late for an interview, the interview is dead in the water. We assume if you were late before you got the job, you're gonna be late once we give you the job, and no employer is really looking for that. Turn off your cell phone before you come into the uh, location. You don't want it ringing, you don't want a distraction. Um, and uh, you know, it says movie theater uh, etiquette there as well, right? Be gracious to everybody you interact with, from the security guard to the CEO, because a lot plays into a hiring decision. And when you leave, you know how it is, everybody talks, right? So, so the, the whole office might flock to the hiring manager and say, hey, what was this guy's problem? You know, he didn't, he didn't smile at me, he didn't say hello, he just kind of was on his phone the whole time he was waiting for you. Um, you know, I don't know that that's the attitude that we need in this office. Conversely, they might all flock to the manager and say, hey, she was great, you know, she introduced herself to all of us. She was like uh, finding out what was going on in the office today and uh, she just seemed really a, a great teammate. And I, you know, if she did okay, I think that's the kind of people we want on our team. Uh, so just make sure your interaction with everybody is positive. 
show confidence by making good eye contact, a firm handshake, and uh, it, you know those are two pieces of advice that are, are still really good, a firm handshake and good eye contact. Sometimes you might be in a situation where there's multiple interviewers are present, so make sure you spread your attention around. Make sure you answer everybody's questions. You might want to direct questions to different people based on their role that you find out, but don't just assume that you know who's making the decision. Bring a notepad, a pen, your resume. These are tools that you came to win, right? So just like wearing a serious outfit shows that you're really interested in getting this position, showing up to be engaged with your pre-prepared questions, the ability to write notes down, all great things. Be enthusiastic and prepare how to explain that your skills are a match for this position. So you kind of did this with the, the resume, right? You're trying to present how your skills are a, a good match for the position. Well, that's written down. Now you got to be ready for the verbal pitch. So this is the sales pitch when you're asking to be hired. Make sure that you can verbalize how do those skills that you bring to the table, how do they apply to this business and why would you be a good candidate based on that? So you may want to practice it a little bit. Sometimes it's hard to uh, transition from what's written down into speaking with somebody so give it a shot always request their business card for contact information because at the end I'll just share with you one key piece of information is gonna be really important the ball still in your court so you're gonna want to be able to follow up after the interview alright so here's what you wear this is unless you're otherwise told I'm gonna suggest that you should wear what we call business professional. So this is business professional for men. A dark or a medium colored solid suit, usually we're gonna show you blues or grays is what we suggest. A solid color or subtle pattern dress shirt, whites or blues typically, and a coordinated business tie. Coordinated business tie doesn't mean it has to have stripes, it doesn't mean it has to be solid. What it does mean is no Tasmanian devil, no Chief Wahoo on it, no uh, Cincinnati Bengals branding, anything like that. You want it to be a business tie. You can have your own personality from there. Okay, so here's business professional for the women. You're gonna wear a suit as well. Two-piece matching, uh, pant or skirt suit. You can choose, either one is fine to do. A classic pencil skirt, when you are wearing a skirt is the style that we suggest, and you wanna wear a complimenting blouse. Again, I'm gonna suggest whites or blues are good choices. And a dark colored uh, dress pants or a skirt with a matching blazer. Uh, all of these are great options. You'll see that the jacket, the important thing is the jacket matches the pants, and then you're wearing professional style blouse. Here are some accessories for the men what, that you should consider wearing. White shirt and a dark red tie, you'll never be wrong. That's the traditional look. Uh, in today's world, it's okay to wear blue. Not every guy has to wear a white shirt. Blue is pretty conservative as well. So we like to suggest if you wanna change it up a little bit, blue with a little bit of pattern, maybe a stripe or a check, that's a great alternative. When you're looking at your shoes, brown leather wingtips is a great style to consider for that blue or gray suit that I told you to wear. And you wanna always have your leather match, so the belt should match the shoes. Here's some accessories for the ladies. You're gonna wear a black pump style shoe with a matching portfolio bag. All your leather should match, right? So shoes and bag, think about that. Uh, collared blouse, either in white or light blue. And uh, women typically don't wear a necktie with their suits, so you don't have that route to express your own personality on it. However, if you wanna add that fabric or that pattern or color that you really feel like kinda makes the outfit your own, a scarf is a great way to add that professional accessory and it looks great too. Here's some styling notes. You can change the look and add a little depth of texture and character on a solid suit by wearing a bolder pattern shirt. And you see that in the slide deck there. Black shoes are technically the dressiest, but browns or burgundies are really nice colors too. Um, always match your leather. And you'll notice that we showed you navy, gray, and you could wear a black suit as well. Those are the right colors to wear. What you didn't see me show you was tan, uh, burgundy, bolder colors, lighter colors things like that. Uh, swapping out your tie and, and wearing your shirt unbuttoned but wearing a pocket silk is a great way of coming maybe to a second interview where you look a little bit more relaxed and casual but you're still put together with the right accessories. Some styling notes for women, think classic, think tailored, simple, you want to be comfortable in it, you want to look nice. Uh, wear closed toed pumps and when you're talking about how high the heel should be, two and a half inches is what we're going to suggest is the max. Um, avoid plunging necklines and if you're unsure of what is or isn't appropriate, just take a look at other.